Peace and blessings, people. Welcome back to the channel once again. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe and notification button. That way, when great content like this comes out in the future, you'll get notifications. Okay, so let's dive into today's topic. Why is dairy so scary? Now, I know many of us have grown up being taught that dairy is the superfood. We're supposed to consume it for our strong bones and teeth. We're supposed to get it for our vitamin D and calcium. And many of us learned that not only in school, but we also learned that through commercials. You know, you remember the Got Milk commercials where they would always get these, you know, supreme athletes to wear milk mustaches and teach us that you should have milk every day for strong bones. Even if you look at the old food pyramid, that will show dairy as this, you know, focal point of what we should be consuming on a daily basis. But the unfortunate thing is in the last decade or so, we've been taught that not only is that not true, but it's actually the opposite. Dairy is actually unhealthy for you, okay? So I'm gonna be diving into that today. I'll also talk about what is the purpose of milk for mammals, okay? Because virtually every mammal on earth produces milk for their young, okay? So it does have a purpose, but you know, when does that purpose run out? And uh, we'll dive into what happens when we consume dairy as adults, what happens to our body? How does that change our phys physiology? How does that create dis-ease in our bodies as well, okay? So let's first dive into my personal story with dairy. Uh, when I was in school, I got this bronchitis infection that simply wouldn't go away. And I didn't want to take any type of antibiotics for it. So I started doing all this uh, research and the research was telling me that, hey, you should try to not consume dairy when you get an upper respiratory infection or a lower respiratory infection and see how that works because it lowers inflammation and then it also decreases the production of mucus. Okay, makes sense, right? I do that for about... 30 days. And what I notice is my sinuses clear up. I also notice that my skin gets clearer and that the infection started to reside and go away. Now, at that point that I was doing the research, you know, when I was coughing up mucus, the mucus was turning, it went from yellow to green. So I was severely infected. And what I noticed that the longer and the longer I went without the dairy, the mucus started to go back from green to yellow to more of a white and then to a clear, okay? So that told me that I was headed in the right direction. And here's the, the sort of top off to that story. So I think I'm all healed because now the, the mucus is not green anymore. Uh, I can breathe a little bit better. I'm not coughing up as much mucus. I'm not coughing as much. And so I'm um, in school, decide to have some pizza that day, which I hadn't had in over 30 days. And all of a sudden I had this pizza and I literally felt like I was having a heart attack. And that was the moment, you know, like I thought to myself, the only thing I'm eating that doesn't make sense that I haven't had in the last 30 days is the dairy. But I just remember feeling inflamed or inflammation just traveling throughout my whole body during that process. And that was the absolute last time I had dairy. Okay, so let's talk about what is the purpose of milk, okay? Because that's essentially what dairy is. I mean, there's many products of milk. Milk can be cheese, it could be butter, it could be yogurt, uh, it could be sour cream. There are many byproducts of milk. But what is the purpose of milk for mammals? Because virtually every mammal on this earth produces milk for the offspring, okay, when they're young. The whole purpose of milk is essentially growth formula, okay? Now, the reason why I call it formula is because that formula is going to be different for every mammal, okay? The formula for a monkey versus a elephant versus a goat versus a cow is very different. You know, when you think about a cow, which is the type of milk that we quite often drink, that formula is designed to take a 100-pound calf and make it a 1,000-pound steer in about a year's time, okay? So that's that growth formula for that cow. Now, we are not supposed to grow it that way, so it's important for us to know and understand that. The other thing that's really important is this. No other mammal in the entire world drinks the milk 
of another mammal, okay? So you'll never see monkey drinking elephant's milk or you'll never see a goat drinking cow's milk, okay? That's another really important factor because in this case, you know, of course, humans, uh, or humans, women, <laughs> produce milk for their young. And the important thing is to understand that that formula is made for a human baby, okay? But we're the only mammals in the entire world that will drink the milk of another mammal, okay? So that's really important. The other thing that's really important is this. No other mammal, with the exception of humans, actually drink milk after infancy, okay? Really huge point. And the reason why that's so important is because it's not only from the standpoint of if I were to offer milk to an adult cow, not only would they sniff it and walk away from it, but they know that that is not food for them, okay? And the other reason why that's so important is because after a certain age, babies lose their ability to break down, you know, um, certain enzymes, particularly the, um, the sh sugar in milk, okay? So ba like human babies lose the ability to break down lactose after a certain age, okay? So it's hugely important for that reason too. So there is a cutoff point. And quite often that cutoff point is when the baby develops what we call or used to call back in the day milk teeth. So as soon as those milk teeth start to come in, that's an indication that, okay, now it's time to start weaning them off of the milk and moving them towards uh, physical food. So uh, of course, that food initially would be pureed food and then go on to you know, more solid food, okay? So hugely important. A lot of things have been lost in the process. The other thing that I think is really important for us to kind of know and understand about all of this is that what is milk typically made of? It's made of, of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, okay? Now, when you look at cow's milk, it's primarily made up of carbohydrate, which is a sugar, lactose, okay? Now, when we look in the world today, 70 to 75% of the world's population is lactose intolerant, okay? Lactose intolerant means that you cannot tolerate the sugar lactose, okay? That is found in milk, okay? 70% of the world's population. Now, I would, I would go out on a limb to say it's a little bit more. And the reason why I'll say that is because most people don't recognize the signs and symptoms of being intolerant to milk. That's the first thing. The other thing that I think is really important is that, <clears throat> especially for the black and brown community, that number goes up exponentially, okay? We've seen in studies where, you know, black and brown people ranging from Africans like myself to Asians, um, they have an increase in tolerance to milk as well too, okay? So keep that in, that in mind as we kind of go through this because, you know, if, it's, if the world is saying 75% of the population, okay, that's three-fourths, that's three out of four people are intolerant to milk. That's saying that humans sh probably shouldn't be drinking milk, okay? So that's the first thing. Or it's products, okay? Like I said, cheese, yogurt, sour cream, butter, etc. cetera. Um, really, really important, okay? So the first comp uh, main component of milk is gonna be the sugar, the carbohydrate, the lactose, okay? The other part is going to be the protein, okay? Particularly in cow's milk, you're gonna find the proteins casein and whey. And I'm gonna jump into why those two particular proteins are so dangerous in a bit, but it's really important to understand those are the particular proteins that are found in milk. And those, again, are the proteins that are designed to take a 100-pound calf and make it a 1,000-pound cow in about a year's time, okay? Really important. And then the other component is going to be the fat, okay? And then when you're looking at the fat in cow's milk, 65% of it, 65% is saturated fat, the kind of fat that lines the, the walls of your vessels uh, in the heart and cause a heart attack, okay? That occlude the arteries and cause a stroke. 65% of that milk is made of that, okay? Really, really important. All right. And so milk quite often is one of the primary ways we load ourselves up with saturated fat. And I'll talk to you in a bit why, why that is a big problem.
Okay. Now let's get into, uh, there's some studies that were con conducted by the PCRM, which is the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And they have linked milk, the same milk that they did the Got Milk commercials for, the same milk that the USDA was telling us that we should have in certain amounts every day uh, for years in the food, uh, food pyramid. Today's research, the studies have connected milk with heart disease, type two diabetes, Alzheimer's, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and even prostate cancer, okay? Again, one of the primary reasons is because milk is, an inflammat is inflammatory to our bodies. It's very inflammatory to our bodies. I'll talk about that in a second, but milk is connected with all of those diseases. And when you start to look at them, many of them are in the top five causes of death for humans, okay? Again, let's jump into now Number two, why milk is so scary, okay? Number two is because milk is a major source of hormones, okay? And I cannot tell you the amount of issues that I'm seeing with both men and women when it comes to having hormonal imbalance. And one of the primary ways that we're driving that imbalance is by adding a lot of these hormones to our bodies that actually shouldn't be there. Now, what's really important to understand about it is that yes, the milk that you're drinking today has tons of hormones in it that are what are called exogenous hormones. These are hormones that are injected into the animal, okay? And they inject these hormones into the animals to cause them to grow bigger in a shorter period of time. But also what's really important, particularly about cow's milk, is that not only do you have to be concerned about the hormones that are coming from the outside of the cow being injected into them, but you also have to be concerned about the hormones that are naturally produced by the cows. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because a lot of people will go out and they'll buy milk that is uh, so-called um, you know, grass-fed, no hormones, no antibiotics. But what they're not accounting for is the fact that the hormones that are naturally in the cow, when you consume the milk, you're getting those hormones. And those hormones are perfectly fine for a cow but they're gonna throw your hormones out off. So it's really important to understand that because not only again, are you getting these unnatural man-made hormones being injected into the cow, which do damage enough by itself, but the hormones that are naturally produced by the cow are actually causing these um, you know, hormonal imbalances too. And these hormonal imbalances are leading to estrogen dominance in women that leads to having very severe PMS during the cycle, okay? It also leads to breast cancer, ovarian cancer, all of these reproductive cancers, prostate, prostate cancer, uh, testosterone issues in men, which is a huge issue that I brought up before and I'll definitely do another video on, but a, a large source of the hormonal imbalance is coming from consuming dairy products, which is primarily, you know, the foundation is milk. Okay, even acne, a lot of acne that is happening today is hormonal as well, too. Number three, number three, the reason why dairy is scary is because of the protein, particularly the casein protein. Um, what we've done, been able to see in studies, particularly the study conducted by the China Project. The China Project is a 30-year study conducted with over 6,000 participants and over 600 different metrics that they measure. And one of the things that they found was that casein increased the risk for developing cancer, okay? Casein, the protein that is in milk, okay? Not the, the not something that they injected in the cow, something that is naturally there because that is good for the cow, but not necessarily good for you as the human being. But the casein increases the risk for cancer. And what they found is that that casein protein that casein protein uh, increases what is called IGF-1. IGF-1 is insulin growth factor, okay, which is inflammatory and not only inflammatory to the body, so it could be the cause of your joint and muscle pain, but also it's inflammatory where it causes, if you have tumors in a body, it causes those tumors to grow, okay? So casein is another reason why dairy is so scary, okay? Now, I know if you're like shaking in your boots at this point because 
most of this information is new to you, again, it's really important to understand that a lot of the science that we grew up on and they were telling us this is the way we should eat, these are the things that are healthy for us, a lot of that is outdated and antiquated, okay? So this is just me, me merely giving you a PSA, PSA, okay? The other thing why dairy is so scary is because it increases your exposure to pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. And the reason why is because cows are fed genetically modified soy and corn. Most cows are not grass fed. Okay. I will go out on a limb to say 90% of cows are not grass fed. Okay. And it's probably leaning more closer to 98%. And the reason why is because cows aren't growing on a farm, you know, grazing, you know, out. Okay. They're in stalls and livestock uh, you know, farms that they're, they're not being, it's not like the picture that they put on the milk carton. Okay. They, they've they been grown in these mass factories. They grew up shoulder to shoulder to each other. They're not able to roam and eat grass. Okay. Which is what they're supposed to be eating. Okay. And so as a result, a lot of these cows are being fed this genetically modified soy and corn and so forth because it's cheap one. And that's genetically modified soy and corn, which 90% of soy and about 95% of corn today is genetically modified. It has to be sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. I mean, I'm a farmer. I own a farm. You can see these people out in the, 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 the fields, you know, spraying their crops in hazmat suits, you know, <laughs> because it's so dangerous. And if you look up, you know, if you look up some of the, the, the statistics on farmers who grow conventionally, because conventional means they're growing by spring. The, the, the increase in the amount of cancer in these farmers is crazy, okay? And so a lot of these animals are being fed the genetically, genetically modified corn and soy, which is sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. And these things kill all pests, pesticides. These things will kill off certain herbs, which why we want to kill off herbs, but we do because they strength, they can overgrow and strangle the crop sometimes. And insects, which is really important because some of these insects are pollinating, but they kill these things off. And when they kill them off, they also are unfortunately unhealthy for you as well when you consume them. When they spray these plants with these pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides, the unfortunate thing is that they don't leave. Like you can't, a lot of this, you can't just wash off. Okay. So it's really important. Uh, increasing your pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides is going to increase the, the amount of gut inflammation and gut dysbiosis, an unhealthy gut, but it's also going to lead to an increase in cancer as well too. All right. And also you're getting a lot of antibiotics as well too. It increases your exposure to antibiotics when you're consuming milk as well too. Number five, Brittle bones. Again, I know that you've been taught, or I was just definitely taught that you needed to drink milk to get strong bones, but all of the new data, all of the new studies are showing us that it does not do that. As a matter of fact, those proteins that I was talking about earlier, they actually create the, the casein and the whey. So, you know, be careful out there. My bodybuilders who are consuming all of these whey products, these proteins create a condition of acidosis in the body. They make the body very acidic. When the body becomes very acidic and it's supposed to be slightly alkaline, the body has to compensate for that because of when you stay acidic, you can go in a condition known as metabolic acidosis, which can lead to a coma and even death. Okay, so the body is always playing this sort of um, balancing act you know, with our hormones, with our biochemistry, with our pH. And so as the body becomes very acidic, now it has to alkalize the body, okay? And how does it do that? Most people don't know this, but to alkalize the body, the body uses minerals, okay? And one of the most alkaline minerals there are is calcium. Calcium is very alkaline, meaning the pH is very high. It's above seven, okay? So what is, where is most of the calcium concentrated in our body? In our bones and teeth, 
okay? So when the body becomes acidic, the body needs to increase the pH. It, started, it starts pulling calcium out of the bones and teeth, okay? So your bones get brittle and your teeth get brittle. This is why there's so much decay when it comes to cavities, you know, with patients today in the in dentistry, okay? Because we're so acidic, okay? So that's a major reason as well. Number six is because it's linked to high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Yes, dairy is linked to high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Why? Because again, I told you about one of the primary sources of saturated fat is dairy, milk, cheese, especially. Cheese is just simply concentrated milk, concentrated fat, okay? It's the fat removed from milk. So what you're consuming is that saturated fat that lines the blood vessels in the heart, in the body, okay? So now you, your blood doesn't flow well. And at some point, your, your blood vessels can become occluded, which can lead to a heart attack, can lead to a stroke. Why is that really important? That's really important because high blood pressure is the number one risk factor for the number one cause of death for humans, which is heart disease, cardiovascular disease, okay? So it's so important. We know and understand one of the primary ways that we can decrease our risk for cardiovascular disease is getting rid of this saturated fat that clogs our arteries, okay? The other increased risk, number seven, is it increases your risk for multiple sclerosis, okay? Multiple, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition, okay? And I've said this before in other videos, but autoimmune conditions start in the gut because they create a leaky gut. And everybody knows that when you consume dairy, not only would it constipate you, would, but it will also inflame your gut as well. I spoke about acne. Acne also, if you have issues with acne, dairy is primarily your, your real problem, okay? So you remove the dairy, you'll start to know some of those pus bumps because that's exactly what dairy is in many, many cases because they find a lot of pus in the milk today because a lot of these animals are literally being milked year round because they're being impregnated year round. Most people forget that in order to produce milk as a human being, we have to be pregnant, okay? Otherwise, certain, certain hormones and, you know, biological changes don't come in place, okay? Guess what? These cows have to be impregnated. They're called dairy cows, but they're constantly being impregnated to produce this milk. And the udders that the milk comes out of, unfortunately, becomes infected. And when it becomes infected, you're not only getting milk, you're also getting pus, okay? And that pus goes into the body and it has to come out, okay? That mucus goes in the body and it has to come out. And one of the ways it comes out is through the skin, okay? So ditch dairy if you want nice, clear skin, okay? Number nine is it elevates your estrogen levels. And we all know that estrogen will increase your risk for certain reproductive cancers, especially in women, okay? Um, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, et cetera, okay? But this is also an issue for men too, okay? The more estrogen dominance you have in the body, it's gonna dip your testosterone down. And I've spoken about this before, but in terms of like our society, we're at the lowest point of testosterone that men have been in probably in our history of being of the human species. You know, we, our ancestors were walking around with testosterone levels between 1,000 and 1,500, whereas today the average testosterone level is somewhere between 250 and 350. I went in and got my levels tested, and when the doctor saw my levels were around about 800, they thought that I was actually taking steroids. <laughs> So like that's how abnormal it is to be normal today, okay? So hugely important, dairy elevates our estrogen levels and we are in a testosterone crisis and we're also in an estrogen dominance crisis as well too. And then the, bump, the, the last one for today is it increases the risk for asthma, especially in children. So if you got kids who are struggling with asthma, one of the primary things you want to take out of their diet is dairy. Start substituting with plant-based milks like coconut milk, hemp milk, things of that nature. Okay, and the bonus is going to be, because you already know it, is that dairy causes digestive issues. Okay, um, if you guys remember like growing up, 
and going to kindergarten, you had to have like a, you know, you had to have your crayons, you had to have uh, one of those big number, big pencils, and then you had to have glue, okay? Because you were gonna be doing all these projects. And if you remember the glue, when you look on the front of the glue, the glue with the little orange top on it, okay? And then the front label is like a blue cow on the front. Well, the reason why that cow is on the front is because guess what? That glue is made from a cow, okay? Dairy makes glue, okay? And that glue, that same glue that you're using that stick things together, it becomes sticky just like that. That dairy becomes sticky just like that inside of your gut, okay, as well too. So this is why it leads to constipation, but also so many gut issues as well too. So if you've enjoyed this video today, okay <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it wasn't too traumatic because i love i i know how much people love their mac and cheese okay some people got seven cheese mac and cheese so i know that but again um, information is what leads us to better choices and better choices is what leads to better habits and better habits is what leads to a better life and lifestyle Okay, so again, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you comment below um, and uh, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification so that you'll get great content like this coming forward. Until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.